cluster headache cluster headache is a type of primary headache it is actually called as a type of trigeminal autonomic cephalgia cluster headache is a type of headache which is typically unilateral and of severe intensity it is commonly associated with localized autonomic activity restlessness or agitation this restlessness or agitation is little different because in migraine patients typically when they have headache they want to lie down and take some rest and they typically get into a dark room whereas cluster headache patients become very restless and agitated when they have an headache commonly seen in male gender between 20 to 40 years of age there are typical triggers for cluster headache like alcohol nitroglycerin sildenafil a cluster headache typically can have one episode a day to a couple of episodes a day each episode can last for about 15 minutes to 3 hours duration peri orbital area is the commonest area where cluster headache is localized why is cluster headache called cluster headache as i already mentioned to you headache in cluster headache can happen one or two episodes in a day such kind of headache days can be in clusters of few weeks or couple of months in a year and there could be a latency period which could go on for a few months or almost a year to recur back in the next year during the same time these cluster headaches typically show two types of patterns one is the diurnal pattern other one is the seasonal pattern when you're talking about diurnal pattern cluster headache patients have headache typically at the same time of the day during that episodes for example if a patient has headache at 10 pm on a particular day the next day 10 pm he has an headache the next day 10 pm he has an headache so it goes on almost in a pattern of diurnal variation cluster headache patients can also have seasonal patterns where patients have these cluster episodes related to particular seasons of the year the four important neuroscience behind cluster headache is lateral posterior hypothalamic gray matter activation talking about management there could be about to management strategies and preventive management strategies oral triptans which are one of the very important choices in migraine is not useful in cluster headache other abortive management strategies which are more useful are 100% oxygen at 12 to 15 liters per minute subcutaneous sumatriptan is one of the very important choices of abortive management basal sprays of sumatriptan and zolmitriptan are the other abortive management strategies talking about preventive management strategies Drugs like verapamil, lithium, methysergide are commonly used in preventive management. Specifically about verapamil, higher doses are required than the usual. Constipation and leg swelling are common issues in relation to verapamil. AV block can happen and that is one of the important reasons why a baseline ECG could be very much necessary in patients before we start verapamil. There are other strategies which could be useful in management of cluster headache like for example steroids prednisolone 60 mg for a week and then being tapered off can be considered as a useful strategy in management of cluster headache deep brain stimulation is useful in resistant patients lesser invasive strategies are occipital nerve stimulation and non penetrative vagus nerve stimulation we had with some bonus discussion in this topic of cluster headache what are the other conditions coming under the trigeminal autonomic cephalgia of course you know about cluster headache so what are the other conditions the conditions are paroxysmal hemicrania hemicrania continua sun ct and sun a what is this sun ct acronym for sun ct stands for short lasting unilateral neuralgic form headache conjunctival injection and tearing what is suna suna acronym stands for short lasting unilateral neuralgic form headache with 
cranial autonomic symptoms how can you differentiate SUNCT from SUNA injectable injection and lacrimation is very much prominent in SUNCT do you remember that C and T acronym standing for conjunctival injection and tearing which is otherwise lacrimation can you differentiate SUNCT and SUNA from cluster headache shorter duration of headaches and varied location of headaches are the ways by which you can differentiate SUNCT and SUNA from cluster headache now this is important because where is the location where you see cluster headache commonly the periorbital areas right whereas here the areas could be different and it could be of shorter duration would you differentiate hemicrania paroxysmal or continua from other tacs response to indomethacin is the key Paroxysmal hemicrania has no gender difference. Hemicrania continua is more common in females. Higher indomethacin dose requirement can indicate secondary paroxysmal hemicrania. By the way, what are the important causes for secondary paroxysmal hemicrania? Bella tertiica IV malformations, cavernous sinus malformations, pituitary pathology, epidermoid tumors these are some of the important secondary paroxysmal hemicrania causes this we come to an end of the topic which is very important for your preparation in exams clinical work after headache